Okay, so we have a few notices now that Ross is going to share with us. Indeed. Um, just a reminder, I know I'm a wee bit of a broken tap at the moment, but please do be looking out for each other and looking out for ourselves during this lockdown. I'm conscious that this time round, uh, there are more and more people who are, who are struggling. And, uh, you know, at surface level, you might think everyone's doing okay, or that particular person is doing okay. But if the Lord brings someone to mind in particular, just give them a buzz. Please be uh, active in your care clusters, touch and base with each other and praying for each other. Do get in touch with myself if I can pray, uh, walk with you or do whatever is allowed. And uh, please do use our WhatsApp prayer um, through Heather Jardine. She looks after that for us so that we can be praying about specifics. In, in terms of the uh, differences to our worship gatherings, uh, clearly for the foreseeable future, the 10 o'clock will be on Zoom and we'll meet in this way. Um, we will be recording and uploading a more traditional prayer book service, uh, which will be available by 6 p.m. The reason why we're a bit vague in that is that sometimes the upload speeds are so slow to YouTube, so that's why we can't be specific. But definitely by 6 p.m., there will be a prayer book service for you to tap into today or later in the week. And then something that we've been we've been doing uh, since uh, last Monday is every weekday morning we've been meeting for morning prayer on Zoom, and I've really enjoyed that. It's been lovely to gather with a number of us just to uh, start the day at eight o'clock in that way. And if you're around, uh, we would love to see you. You know, I know what works like, what kids are like, but if you could dip in sometimes. It would be lovely to see you, even with the, the video mute, if, 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 you know, kids are running around the place and stuff, no worries. You could just video mute and join in that way. But it's there. It's good to meet together regularly. We need that. We need to be connecting with God and with each other regularly. And this morning, weekday, uh, Zoom is a way of doing that. Um, prayer is really important and uh, we're meeting on weekday mornings to pray but we also are going to have days of prayer punctuated throughout this year and uh, the first one of those is at the, the end of uh, January, Saturday, January the 30th and uh, you can sign up by either just drop, drop me a text and saying Ross I would like to do this hour of prayer, would, would love it if the whole day was covered in prayer but as much as we are able, you could sign up for an hour, half an hour, two hours, whatever you want of prayer that day using the link that's on the screen there and is on our Facebook site or by contacting me and saying, look, I'm available for this hour. Um, I'll, I'll commit to praying then. Uh, there'll be more details of what to pray for in, in future weeks. Conscious that because we're not doing news sheets at the moment, that communication uh, maybe isn't what it could be. And there's some things that we can't just publish in a more public forum. So uh, I wanted to just update you on a, a number of wee things at the end of the notices here. First of all, you remember the gift day, the Advent gift day at the end of last year? Well, uh, thank you that we were able to raise £4,750. And uh, as you know, some of that's gone to our upgrade. And then there's a percentage that are going to church planting across the diocese and to Maridi Diocese, our link diocese in Sudan. So thank you for your response to that. And um, the other thing to, to let you know is that some of you know this, some of you don't, but that every year uh, at Christmas, we have the joy of uh, standing with a, a number of partners. Oh, that's interesting. There was meant to be little pictures of different. Um, yeah. There's meant to be little pictures of different organisations in those hearts, but somehow they've disappeared. Poof. Anyway, uh, what we do is we give ten percent of uh, free will offerings away. We believe a principle of giving away ten percent and partnering with other mission and charity organisations is really part of who we are. And we had the joy of giving away 8,500 to different partners, such as Christian Aid, Love for Life, uh, Tear Fund, CAP, um, Storehouse, et cetera, et cetera, in December. So uh, that's our collective giving. And I just wanted to inform you of that and to ask you to be continuing to pray for our mission partners. And then finally, um, in this time, uh, 
Are we update on the upgrading? Where are we at with that? Well, tomorrow night uh, we're meeting a select vestry to discuss and God willing to sign off on phase one of uh, our upgrade project. So we're going to divide it, uh, vestry permitting into two, into two uh, phases and we're going to sign off, God willing, on phase one of that work, hopefully beginning end of January, early February, um, depending on when the particular builders that we're going after are available, but they want to start and we want them to start as soon as possible. So that's a wee update on all of that. And very finally and importantly, please do uh, use prayer ministry, which is available at the end of this Zoom service. If you would like someone to pray with you about anything or for you to stand in prayer for someone else, then send a wee chat to us and we'll arrange that at the close of our time together. Alrighty, Sonia. Okay, so we're going to have our Bible reading now before we hear our talk. So it should be on the screen for you. It's from Mark 1, verses 4 to 11. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him. Confessing their sins, they were baptised by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes the one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I'm not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptise you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptised by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. So let's just take a bit of time to pray for us and for each other um, as we listen to this talk. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for this passage and what you want to say to us this morning through it. I pray for Ross that you would fill him with your Holy Spirit and anoint him uh, to preach what you've given him with authority and power, Lord. And I pray for each one of us, for our minds and hearts, Lord, for our focus, for our places that we're listening, Lord, that they'll be at peace and that we'll be able to receive and hear what you have to say to us this morning. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay, so um, obviously there was a lot of news this last week, a lot of things kicked off this last week, but maybe the biggest or one of the biggest bits of news was that Michelle Keegan has joined a slew of stars who have abandoned dry January after just a week of 2021 following the uh, national lockdown. And I wonder how you're getting on if you made any uh, New Year's resolutions with, with your particular choices. If you've already tripped up on your uh, New Year's resolution, well, then you're joining a tradition, apparently, that dates back to 153 BC, which was the first time that uh, New Year's resolutions were made and undoubtedly broken as well. So apparently it was the mythical king of Rome, Janus, after whom we name uh, January, whose story is first associated with these New Year's resolution. He had, uh, he was mythologized uh, as having two faces, one face that was looking back into the past and one face that was looking forward into the future. So he became the symbol of New Year's resolutions and was known as the God of beginnings, the God of beginnings. As Christians, we worship the true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, through whom genuine new beginnings in life are actually possible. And although I'm not into New Year's resolutions in a big way, we do all need new beginnings. We all need opportunities to take stock of our lives 
and to reorientate our direction in life. And January, the turn of the year, is a really good reminder to do that. Now, in our reading, our reading from Mark, Mark begins his gospel. He's like a jack bursting out of a box, you know? He's like, it's like our Rebecca. And he bursts out of the box proclaiming the beginning of the good news about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. With Mark, there's no faff. He just gets right to the point. He, he actually passes over Jesus' birth and all the stuff which we've been enjoying celebrating uh, over recent weeks. And he begins his account with the prophet John, that voice which was foretold <laughs> by Isaiah, which was crying out in the desert, urging people to repent and to make ready for God's coming. And the rest of Mark's gospel reveals or, or unpacks Jesus as this God who came, this God who came and dwelt among us. But right at the beginning of Mark's account, he has this puzzling um, story of Jesus's baptism. Uh, this morning, we're going to focus on two very important truths that the baptism of Jesus, I think, points to. And these are they. First thing is that God calls all of us to reorient our lives. He makes it clear that each of us needs a new beginning, if you like, that starts in Jesus. And secondly, that God in Jesus does so much more than just demanding that we do better. Instead, God in Jesus identifies with us, meets us where we find ourselves, and then walks with us into a new life, enabling us to live differently if we'll cooperate with him. And that makes all the difference, as we'll see. So we're going to look at these in more detail. And uh, before we do that, I just need to fill in some essential background about baptism. Because baptism, although Christians have appropriated it, it was used as a way to initiate non-Jews into Judaism. So if you were a non-Jew at that time, if you were a Greek or a Roman, for example, who was traditionally seen as unclean to a Jew, and you wanted to convert into Judaism, then you were often baptized, um, and males, you were also circumcised, as a mark of that conversion, of that cleansing. But in our reading, we find John the Baptist preaching a baptism of repentance to his fellow Jews. So John was treating God's chosen people, Jews themselves, as if they were unclean, as if they required cleansing in order to have their place in this coming kingdom of God, which John was talking about. And what's more, John doesn't make any difference. He doesn't differentiate between like righteous religious leaders on the one hand, or, you know, tax collectors and other people who were seen as down the the righteousness scale on the other. In John's eyes, everyone was in the same boat. All people were sinners in need of repentance, with the exception of one, the one that John said this about in verses 7 to 8 of our reading. After me comes one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I'm not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he, this Jesus, will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Now listen, it was this one, the one that John talks about here, this Jesus, Son of God, Messiah, who seeks his cousin out and asks John to baptize him. What is that about? Matthew tells us that John the Baptist was understandably flabbergasted. He says to Jesus, look, I need to be baptized by you, and yet you come to me. If John was demanding that people come to their senses, that they own up to their sins, and they make a brand new start with God, signified by baptism, then why would Jesus, who had nothing to repent of, why would he quite intentionally ask to be baptized. I want you to think with me about what's going on here. 
And this is where we get to unpack those two crucial truths which I mentioned earlier. Firstly, that the baptism of Jesus demonstrates that God calls each one of us to reorientate our lives, to embrace a new beginning in God. Increasingly, I find that people are very comfortable with the idea that God is love. I could talk about God being love to anybody and they'll have no qualms listening to me. But I find that people are increasingly uncomfortable with how the Bible portrays such love in action. Let me explain what I mean. In our culture now, we seem to equate love with a blanket acceptance of people and their choices. So for God to be all loving must mean that God tolerates whatever we do, he tolerates our sinfulness. Yet our reading this morning from Mark's gospel presents a very different perspective. It shows God not just tolerating sin, but actually calling people to change, calling people to repent. God isn't just accepting of whatever life choices people make, but instead he calls us to a better way. He calls us to change our ways and then offers forgiveness for world damaging and self and people damaging choices that we've made. So we have John in the wilderness calling his people in no uncertain terms to change the way that they think and live. And then Jesus comes on the scene. Remember, Jesus is our all-loving God in flesh. So how is he going to react to this baptism of repentance? Well, I think it's really significant that Jesus doesn't stand on the riverbank and say, what are we doing here? Calling everyone out of the water saying, look, God's all loving. Look, come and follow me and I can teach you to accept one another's life choices. And if we all just try a wee bit better to be good, we can turn this world into a happy place. He doesn't do that. Jesus lets people get into the water and he affirms John's message that each one of us needs to repent. I know that this message isn't woke, okay? But God in Jesus came to tell us that the God ignoring direction of our lives leads us to destruction. It's harmful to ourselves, to each other, to the planet. To the universe and he calls us to a radical change in direction we need a new beginning christianity isn't just about trying to be a wee bit better instead it's recognizing that we cannot be good without god's intervention in our lives and we need to do life differently we need to do life in partnership with god depending on him submitted to him and this 180 degree change of mind or change in life direction fundamentally means that we stop trying to live life on our own and we turn to God and we say, Jesus, I want to follow you and your ways. Forgive me for forging ahead on my own path, but I can see that that doesn't work. And so I'm going to go your way now. So please come by your spirit and live in me and help me to live this better way that you're calling me to. That's what it means to be a Christian. And if you've never had that step, if you've never actually taken this step of submitting your life to Christ in this way, we really need to. But I want to say something else on this point. As I've reflected on where we find ourselves, maybe many of us who would claim to be Christians also need to repent today of trying to do life on our own way using our own resources. Maybe at the state start of this new year, as we each take stock, for example, in how we're facing this coronavirus crisis, maybe we need to repent and to reestablish patterns of daily dependence on God, patterns of daily drawing on the eternal unlimited resources of God. So many of us are struggling, we're despondent, we're joyless, we're anxious. And I ask you, as I ask myself, do we need a change of direction? Do we need a change of mind? Do we need to repent 
and submit afresh to Jesus as Lord and Savior, not just in word and deed, but in actually how we live our lives each day. Now, listen, the last thing I want to do is to clobber people who are struggling over the head. I'm preaching to myself as much as to any of us this morning, but stay with me, please, because that's part one. And here's the good news part, okay? Here's part two. A perverse pleasure of mine is uh, to read the Facebook comments under a contentious news headline. Um, so Belfast Live is cracking at this. They, they'll put a, a headline such as further lockdown measures necessary as COVID cases surge. And if you read the comments below, oh man, all sorts of comments, as you can imagine. But my point is that the tone is invariably tribal as well as vitriolic. It's them against us, them against us. It's encamping, entrenching into particular viewpoints. Here's the thing. Jesus does something in his baptism which is so significant. Jesus gets into the water with us. He gets into the water with us. With Jesus, there's no them and us. Rather, he fully identifies with us. He meets us in our mess, if you like. And if we let him, he'll walk with us into a new life and enable us to lead that new life. The very bedrock of our faith is this truth, this incredible truth that Jesus, the Son of God, became human and dwelt among us. Uh, one of my heroes of faith is this fellow Dietrich Bonhoeffer, a German theologian executed by Nazis in 1944. And he sums this point up classically. He says, if Jesus Christ is not true God, then how could he help us? If he is not true man, how could he help us? So in other words, as God, Jesus has the power to transform our lives and lead us to the Father. And as man, Jesus has the ability to identify with our weaknesses and to strengthen us in our times of need. When Jesus was baptized, it was a sign of God's generous solidarity with us. God loves you to such a degree that he's content to be numbered among tax collectors, pagans, politicians, preachers, all of us, you and me. Instead of leaving us doomed in our sin, Jesus jumps right into the mess alongside us to help us walk a different way. Um, a lot of Facebook, social media memes of Christianity, they just don't work for me. They're too twee, but this one really works for me. Um, this image of Jesus in the storm, reaching with us in the storm, reaching for us, holding us, leading us to a different way. Um, if you're a visual person, I would encourage you maybe just to print this out and to put it somewhere in your, in your house and, and daily just to say, today I'm going to look to you, Jesus. Today I'm conscious that you're with me in the mess, you're with me in my struggle, and that you're going to walk with me uh, through this storm into a new life, into a different way, because that's what he offers. So at the start of this new year, we celebrate the baptism of Jesus, and I really urge you to reflect on these two twin truths. Firstly, each of us needs this new beginning. God's all-powerful. God is holy. God is just. He cannot and shouldn't just brush our rebellion with all the pain that it's caused under the carpet. But Jesus is the way to real and genuine change. If you haven't acknowledged your need to be rescued by Jesus and asked him to save you, then you need to. We really all need to. And then secondly, let's each recommit to the one who's not prepared just to stand idly by while we destroy ourselves, but who instead jumps right into the mess with us in order to lead us out, in order to show us a different way. Let's follow the one who willingly identifies with us sinners, and by doing so leads us through the waters of God's judgment to a life of God's grace, because this is love. Let's pray together.
Father, I pray that you'd come by your Holy Spirit. And uh, Lord, particularly for those who I know are listening and are struggling, I pray, Lord, that you would just grab hold of their hand and say, I am here. I am for you. I am with you in this storm. I'm with you in this struggle. Hold on to me. Daily hold on to me. And we'll walk out of this together. And Lord, if the storm could get worse and rage and just do all it wants to do, Lord, I thank you that in you we are secure. As we hold on to you, we are secure. Mm -hmm. Lord, would you communicate that to the depths of our spirit and would you help us to hold on to you? And Lord, if there are those of us who, in all honesty, we've never really acknowledged our need for a new beginning. You know, we, we love church and we come along and, and all that, but we've never really acknowledged that I need a new beginning in Jesus. Lord, would you just communicate that need to us and help us to um, turn our lives around and to, to do life with you at the center of who we are. God, help us. Thank you that you long to. Thank you that that's your heart for us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Russ. Okay, um, we're going to just close in prayer together. Um, I think you know the drill. Um, let's say together the words in orange, and then I'll say the words in white together. May the path. May the path that Christ walks to bring justice upon the earth, to bring light to those who sit in darkness, to bring out those who live in bondage, to bring new things to all creation. May this path run through our life. And may the blessings of the God of life, the Christ of love, and the Spirit of grace be upon us this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen.